One, two, one, two, three, four. Howdy folks, thanks for checking out the lesson here for Blue Ridge Cabin Home in the key of A. And of course we'll be working out of G position right here. And as you just saw and heard, I created two arrangements. The first one being very beginner. Right down the middle we'll play that melody right on the head. And the second time through we'll get more expressive with that melody. Add in some cross picking, some classic bluegrass licks and runs. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and break down that first arrangement note for note. If you wanna download the tabs for everything and access both arrangements, click the link in the description to learn how. All right, so let's put those first four up on the screen there. We got a pickup on beat three. I'm gonna play it for you and then break it on down slowly. So here's what it sounds like. One, two. One more time, one, two. Also, make sure that you remember that this is the melody for the chorus. Um, the chorus and the verse are very similar, but kind of the way it bounces is a bit different for the chorus part. So again, both of these solos are for the chorus. Don't, don't get it too confused in your head. Um, we got that pickup there on beat three. It has an open G, quarter note, then second fret G. Quarter note there, pretty easy little pickup. You wanna slide to the fourth fret. Gonna make this shape right here. It's often known as an F shape. Um, obviously, we're playing it from the G chord here, and we are capoed up, so it's actually sounding an A chord. But for all intents and purposes, we're gonna call it a G chord. We're gonna be using it a lot in this arrangement and the next one. So we play a quarter note there, and then we're gonna do a kind of a partial strum. One, two, three, and. So there's a tie in there. That's what those little those lines are connecting the notes, so there's no strumming or no pick direction mark below there. Still want to keep your right hand moving. Two, three, and. So on the and of three, you catch it on the up. One, two, three, and. And then pluck that fourth fret G string again. And then go on the measure three and you pluck it again. And then now is a down up strum on them three strings. Four, two, slide on the G string. And then open G, and that's a quarter note there. And then measure four, we go to the C chord, but we're gonna hammer zero to two on the D string. And then open G. And then strum here, down, up, down, up, okay? One and two. Those four in context now. One, two. Okay. Then moving on, measure five. Play the A string. There's the C bass note there. Let me actually play those four. So measure five, again, we had the C, still on the C chord. We'll play the bass note, and then we'll do a down-up strum on the higher sounding three strings. If you hit more than that, it's all right, but just one, two, and. And then the melody goes to the open G twice there, two quarter notes, very simple. Three, four. And then we go to um, a D chord, and we're gonna pluck the G string though, and then strum a D chord. Now there's a little bit room here for kind of fingering or playing this D chord for whatever's comfortable for you. Um, so I, I have it tabbed out that, you know, the whole D chord right there, two, three, two, right? 
but you might see me just be plucking, or I'm sorry, fingering the uh, G and the B string, okay? And I might be doing it with some different fingers right there. I have the pinky and the second finger. You might see the first and the second finger. You know, it kind of depends on what's happening, what's coming next. But um, yes, you can definitely do it the regular way. Okay, and but I like this second finger and pinky fingering because it allows me to get to what's coming up in measure seven a little easier. So just want to let you know a little bit, um, got a little option there. So measure six, I hammer two or zero two on the G and then I strum. And then second fret G, strum. And you notice the high E rings open a little bit. And that's totally fine. Kind of gives it a D9 sound, um, a little more open. And that's, again, that, that totally works. Measure seven, zero two hammer on the G, strum. And then right here, it's kind of the reason for all this is fourth fret on the D, second fret on the D. Okay, I just had my third finger available to catch it. See, I don't have my third finger available, and I gotta move it up there. So, then measure eight, open D, strum a G chord, and then a little G run here, open A, first fret A, slide to two, open G, I'm sorry, open D. Now open G. So all four of those, two, ready, go. So just watch your fingering on the D chord, see what's most comfortable. I know some people aren't used to doing the fingering like that, but it's just a bit more efficient. And you wanna be able to play that D chord a couple different ways since it is one of our basic chords, there's more than one way to finger it. All right, then moving on here, measure nine. Okay, it's almost exactly the same as the first four measures of the piece. Very similar, just one little thing is different. So measure nine, I end on that open G, right? For my G run. I strum the G. Here's our pickup, open G. And then two zero pull on the G. That's a little different, right? Then we slide up to that F shape, G chord. We do a down up strum here. And this part's just a little bit, the rhythm is just a bit different. And a quarter note on the G string, and then two eighth notes. Okay, one, two, three, four, and measure eleven is the same as before. G string, strum, four two slide on the G, then open G, and then measure twelve is the same as measure four. Zero two hammer on the D. You know, come into the C chord, open G, and then down ups. And then the last four of this arrangement um, sound like this. Okay, and then it'll go on to the second arrangement. But measure 13, you know, we come from the C chord and we're still on it. So we bass note, then we strum the bottom half. And then open two open G's in a row. And we go to the D chord. I'm gonna do that fingering I talked about with the pinky and the second finger. So zero two hammer on the D, on the G string. Strum, G string again. And then this fingering also sets me up for this particular measure right here. So I can shift up into this little lick here. So I'll have my second finger in place. Again, it just makes it more efficient. I can shift up in this nifty little lick here. Measure 15. So nice little bluegrass run there. So two, four slide on the G, 
three on the B, four, slide down to two, open G, two zero pull on the D, and then measure 16, open G, second fret D, and then a little bit, a little bit of a run down to the lower octave G. So it starts on the open D, two on the A, zero two hammer on the A, third fret on the low string. So those four in context, two, ready, go. So there's the arrangement, or the first arrangement. I'm going to play through the whole thing now, and you can follow along. I have the tabs up on there. And uh, yeah, you can hear it all go by. I'm going to do it kind of like a moderate tempo or just below that. So here it is. So, one, two, three, four, one, two. first arrangement if you want to download the tabs for this one the audio tracks and access the second arrangement all the videos and the sound slice click the link in the description to learn how otherwise you can watch some other videos that are around me until next time take care